Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited that you're here with me today to see my tag video, the Retro Anti-Aging Community video, I think. No, wait a minute, it's not Retro Anti-Aging, it's Anti-Aging Community video, I believe. And the person who wrote the tag questions is Sarah, the Retro Anti-Ager. But before I tell you about Sarah, I first learned of this tag when I was watching Karen at Mrs. Ginger Beauty. She did the tag and she did a fabulous job with it. For those of you who don't know Karen, her channel is phenomenal and she is phenomenal phenomenal. She's this gorgeous redhead, looks kind of like Julianne Moore. She's got this amazing thick red hair and she does not have a hair extension unlike me. Her hair is just beautiful, her skin is just beautiful, and more than that she's just very knowledgeable about makeup and skincare and she's not afraid to tell it like it is. Very honest and down to earth. But I'll go ahead and put a link to her channel below and I hope you go and watch her tag video on the same topic because her honesty is quite refreshing. And speaking of honesty, the woman who wrote this tag, who I mentioned earlier, is really amazing. And I was not at all familiar with her channel. I just found it because I was watching Karen's channel and I linked to Sarah's channel through Karen's channel. And she actually wrote all these tag questions and they are tough questions. They're all about anti-aging, any procedures we've had done, and our feelings about aging, which is kind of a raw topic for me. I don't know if it is for you, but I'll put a link to Sarah's channel below. Her channel is called The Retro Anti-Ager. She is really amazing and you ought to check out her channel, if nothing else, because she's totally different. She is not politically correct at all, as we say. She talks about makeup and skincare and anti-aging. She did a fabulous video about getting along with other women and it is so refreshing to see someone who is not afraid to be honest and open and vulnerable. So if you haven't checked out her channel, I hope you'll do so. If you're not a subscriber at my channel, before you go check out their wonderful channels, I hope you'll subscribe and click that little bell. That will just notify you of my future videos. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It just gets you on my list to receive my videos. Okay, let's get to these questions and I'll be using my cell phone to read the questions. The first question is an easy one. What is your age group, over 40, 50, 60, etc.? Well, I will say I'm in the latest possible stages of the 50 age group. I'm going to be entering the big 60 age group in about four months. And oh my, I am having difficulties with that, ladies. Um, we won't get into that now, but oh my, it's just eye-opening to be at that big number. And number two is what bothers you most about aging? And I will tell you about all of these questions. I'm going to be totally honest with you. And the thing that bothers me most about aging is that somehow for men, it's okay to age and you know they get the CEO look supposedly when they get some gray in their hair and they get some wrinkles and we get this washerwoman look I guess society doesn't let us be like CEOs and have a little gray in our hair and be distinguished or they say she's distinguished and it's not a really very good compliment I really don't like that I don't like the feeling that men as they get older for the most part seem to get better than they were up to a certain point and then we women, it's like we lose our value in society. And I, I absolutely hate that. And it's something that I would really like to see change. Number three, have you had any procedures done, plastic surgery, etc.? And yes, I have. And I'll tell you exactly what I've had. I have had Botox across my forehead and in my crow's feet area since I was probably 42. And I am 50 nine now so that's a lot of years using Botox and Botox is really preventative against wrinkles because I used to have deep forehead wrinkles because I would always lift my eyebrows when I would speak had some heavy forehead wrinkles and those are gone now so I've done Botox I tried Restylane in my lips about five years ago I absolutely loved it and my husband hated it and that's part of our ongoing battle because he really doesn't want me to get lip fillers and I have to admit my 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 thoughts on that are changing a little bit I'm not as gung-ho to get the lip fillers. But maybe 10 years ago, I had a couple of IPLs on my face to get rid of brown spots. And actually, I think I had three. The first one went great. Basically, it's a kind of a lunchtime laser procedure. Go back to work right after it. But over about a week, the little brown spots on your face actually turn browner. And then they flake off your skin like leaves. It is amazing. And the first one went very, very well. And so then I went along for six months or nine months and got a few more brown spots. So I thought, well, I'll do it again. The second one went kind of well. And then the third one did not go well at all because the third one produced hyperpigmentation all over my face. And so then I spent the next maybe four or five years using hydroquinone to kind of fight that off. So that turned out to not be a wonderful experience on the IPLs. You have to be careful with those. About five years ago, I had liposuction under my chin 
and I was very happy with that because I was getting kind of jowly and I was getting a little bit of a double chin here and so I think that that worked out fairly well and I was very happy with the results of that and about four years ago I got some fat injected in my nasal folds and I felt like that went very well but he also injected the fat in my cheeks and I was not happy at all about that and in fact he over injected my cheeks and I spent the next two or three, four years looking kind of puffy and even today there are times when I really don't like it. Getting the fat fillers was part of another procedure I had to take out my silicone breast implants and replace them with fat. You can actually have your breast implants replaced with your own fat and so what they did was they took fat out of my tummy and they put it in my boobs, <laughs> which was really good because I was like an NA or nearly A. I couldn't even fill a nearly A bra. That's how small I was. So I was very happy that they could do that. And I was having some health problems and I don't know that they were related to the silicone implants because I was also diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis at the time. All I know is that now five years later, I don't have the silicone uh, implants anymore and I no longer have the joint pain. So I don't know exactly what caused what, but I feel pretty good about that. You know, he put me out to do the fat injection in my breast. And when I woke up, I was horrified to realize that he had not just done my nasal folds, but that he had put some fat in my cheeks. And I was so unhappy about that. I was horrified. I can remember going home. I, I went elsewhere to get that done. And I can remember flying home in the airplane totally embarrassed because I felt like I looked so terrible with those big fat cheeks. So that is one thing I've learned about doing these procedures that I've done is that they can turn out well or they can turn out not well. And uh, so that makes me a little bit leery about having things done in the future, I have to admit. Number five, what was the pivotal point when you realized you wanted to tackle anti-aging? Well, that's a really easy one. When I passed 50, I still looked pretty darn good. I mean, I thought I did. But once I hit about 55, it was like I woke up one morning and all of a sudden my once smooth face was getting kind of puffy and jowly and I was getting this double chin and I was just not happy with the way I was looking. It was almost like every morning I would wake up and go to the mirror and say, oh my God, what happened to my face? Sagging, I was getting more wrinkly. Somehow my makeup, which I'd been wearing the same makeup for years, just really looked pasty and no longer looked good on me. I started looking around on the internet for youthful makeup tips and for anti-aging skincare. And of course, that led me to YouTube, and I was amazed at YouTube. You know, I'd always heard of it, but I really didn't know what it was. I'm not all that computer savvy. And I found all of these women who are my age and who are having a ball and who are on the air and they were talking about the things that were helping them. I watched Mary Ellen after 60 and I saw her great retin-A results and I saw Angie of Hot and Flashy, her wonderful results. And so I started changing things. I was watching YouTube videos like crazy. I tend to get a little addicted to things and I think I was a bit addicted to YouTube. So I was watching these videos kind of night and day whenever I wasn't at work. I was watching these videos and making notes and buying a lot of things. Started making changes and over maybe six months or a year, I really started to notice that things were improving and that I was starting to look better. And that's why I decided to start the YouTube channel because I wanted to share that information with all of you. Looking at myself in the mirror when I was around 57 or 58, that was the pivotal point that got me into anti-aging. Number six, do you think it's possible to anti-age? Well, to a certain extent, I do think it's possible to look a bit younger, maybe four or five years younger, but it's definitely not possible to go back to when you were 20 or 30. Saw a thumbnail this morning of a beautiful YouTuber who is in her 40s. I mean, she's beautiful. You would know her, but I don't want to say her name because in this thumbnail, she was right next to her. Her picture was right next to her beautiful, young, like 22-year-old daughter. And I realized again, there is nothing that's going to take us at 45 or 55 or 60 back to looking like we're 22. So it is not possible to do that, no matter what the ads try to tell us. But it is possible to look a little bit better and to feel better about ourselves and do some things to make the aging process easier. Number seven, of all the lotions and potions for anti-aging out there, which ones do you think are a gimmick? You know, I really don't know. There's just so many lotions and potions. I, I guess as an overall rule, I think the ones which are gimmicky are the ones that throw around one little chemical that's supposedly good for us, like vitamin C or something like that, but they won't tell you the percentage, and so you have no idea, and most of the skincare out there is like that. Throw out a buzzword like vitamin C or niacinamide, and they won't tell you what the percentage is, so you have no idea. I think they're throwing around those scientific sounding names in a gimmicky way, and costing us all a bunch of money for a bunch of creams that don't work. Number eight, which ones work? Well, Retin-A for sure. I've been on Retin-A now almost a year and I've really seen some positive changes in my skin, which I really appreciate. I think niacinamide really works to make your pores look smaller. I really have had great results with niacinamide. 
I think vitamin C works to brighten your skin and get rid of some surface discolorations. I would say those are the main things that I'm really having great success with right now. Number nine, if you could change just one thing about your aging process, what would it be? Okay, actually what it would be is, and there is no way to get rid of this ladies and it just frustrates the heck out of me, is that even though I'm a kind of a thin person, my once tight tummy and my tight thighs, you know, they are a thing of the past. Everything is kind of bagging and sagging and even my arm skin, I, I just don't like that. The, the one thing I would change is to really be able to firm my skin all over my whole body. That's what I would change. Number 10, what one thing are you most pleased about with your physical appearance at this point in your life? Well, that's a little hard for me because I feel kind of braggy to, to say what it, what it is, but I think my skin on my face, I'm most happy with that. And the reason is because a lot of people say, you know, they went through the 70s and tanned like crazy. I tanned early on in my early 20s, but for some reason I didn't think I looked very good with a tan because I tanned just really, really brown really, really quickly. And so I stopped tanning and I started staying out of the sun rather militantly. By the time I was in my mid-30s, I was using sunblock every single day. Whenever I would go outside, I would wear hats and sunglasses and umbrellas. At my kids' soccer games, I was like the crazy woman over there in umbrella and sunglasses. And you know, I know people looked at me like I was crazy. But now when I look at those people, I can tell how much better my skin looks than theirs. A lot of it is Retin-A and the products I'm using now but having stayed out of the sun all those years is really what helped my skin look pretty good. Number 11, do you accept that you're getting older? And the answer is no, I do not accept that I'm getting older. You guys, I mean, I'm, I hate to be so raw about this. I mean, I know I'm getting older and I guess, I guess intellectually I accept it, but emotionally I don't accept it. I mean, can't you remember being like 25 and 30? When I was 30 or 35, I never thought I'd be almost 60. I just, I just can't even get my, my head around that. For all those years when I was a young adult, my husband and I were putting money into a 401k, which now we're very glad about, but it seemed forever in a way to be 59 and a half, and my husband could access this 401k already. And I actually can access the 401k too. I never really thought I'd be this age, I guess. And so I'm not really accepting aging very well at all. And number 12, when all is said and done with it, is it about external or internal? And the answer is that it's internal. I mean, that is the most important thing. I hate the external changes. I don't like those at all. But in terms of internal changes, I'm really trying to sort of compensate for the negative, somewhat negative external changes by making some positive changes inside. In my first half, I really looked pretty good on the outside, but the inside was kind of lacking for me. I didn't have a lot of confidence. I felt very negative about things. I let myself go to the depressed side of things often instead of boosting myself up and looking at the blessings that I had in my life. It's kind of ironic because now in my second half, the outside is definitely starting to decline, but the inside I think is actually improving for me, which I am so happy about. And really I have this feeling that once the inside gets even stronger, that I won't be so worried about the external changes because I have been doing a lot of internal work to become happier, to not go to the depressed side automatically, to switch my thoughts, to have the habit of happiness. I saw Elle in one of her Sunday chats recently, and I'll link it below because it was wonderful, and it's a little tiny video, maybe four or five minutes, something like that. She talked about happiness, and she said that it's a decision to be happy, that every morning when you get up, you decide to be happy, that it's not an emotional thing being happy, it's a decision that we make every day, and in fact, every minute. She put it into words so well, but it's the kind of thing I've been learning lately that we decide to be happy. Question 13 is a long one. If you had to choose growing older more rapidly with your physical appearance, but yet having vibrant health or vice versa, outwardly aging slower, but yet declined health, which would you choose? And as much as I would like my external appearance to say nice and young looking, I have been in poor health for many years with the rheumatoid arthritis, and that is just a horrible experience and I would really choose the vibrant health and less on the looks. It's part of the vibrant health, and one thing that I really miss is that sometimes my energy seems lower than it was when I was younger, and as part of the vibrant health, I would take that youthful energy that I used to have and hold on to that. That would be absolutely a wonderful gift, and that would make the changes on the outside worth it. Well, thank you to Sarah for writing that tag. It was a great one. And thank you to Karen for broadcasting it because that's how I came into contact with the tag. I hope you'll visit both of their channels. And again, I hope you'll subscribe to me and click that little bell to be notified of my future videos. And also, if you could give me a thumbs up, that would be great. Well, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. So I'll go to my card deck, The Life Loves You Cards by Louise Hay. And let's see what God has in store for us to think about today. 
Okay, let's go ahead and choose a card. See what God has in store for us today. Okay, this is a good one. Only love is real. Only love is real. Whenever you're afraid, remember this. Only love is real. Let love bless you, guide you, and inspire you. And you know, it's so interesting that this card came at the end of this video where we're talking so much about physical appearance and aging because that is so true. At the end of life, all of this won't matter because really only love is real. And you know, when I pass on to the other side and they're talking about me at my funeral or whatever, I hope they don't say, oh, she had a great looking face at 80. I hope they say, Beth was kind and loving and giving and she never met someone that she didn't want to help. Because really, when all is said and done, all of this passes away and only love is real. So just for today, let's try to be as loving as we can, as kind as we can, as giving as we can, because really at the end of life, we're going to find out that only love is real. Take care. See you next time.